All right. Can you see us? Yes. Can you see my head? Of course. Can you see my feet? Yes. All right. We're getting good at holding cameras? Yep. Beautiful. All right. Teach me grappling. What's up? I'm Coach Brian. I got Coach Timmy right here. And we are now back again. It's not over. We're still talking about the UFC. I think the whole world is still talking. Um, Conor McGregor versus Habib Nurmagomedov. Guys, in the first round, I just did a video yesterday on Conor's single leg defense and then basically what Habib used, uh, basically changing off to a double leg. Now, I wanna show you guys, there was a lot of questions over what should Conor have done, you know? And, and I'm gonna tell you guys what I really think right here. Um, the big mistake was Connor actually went and found a wrestling coach. I don't know who works with him for his wrestling, and, but the move that he used to counter uh, Habib's takedown was what I would consider an advanced technique. So, and he did really well with it. And now you, may not look, you might look at it and go, that's not advanced, but what I'm saying is, is not every high school kid practices defending the high crotch single that way. Um, there's more basic moves out there that pe most people use. The move that he used is really good. It's a great move. But why would you use wrestling to try to counter wrestling when the wrestling of Habib is like the best? You know, so it would be like having a Muay Thai guy. You're fighting the best Muay Thai guy in the world. And then what do you do? You go out and get a Muay Thai coach. It makes sense at first, but then how are you gonna, in your camp, get good enough to beat the best Muay Thai guy with Muay Thai? He knows what, how to counter that stuff. It would make much more sense to go get a different striking art, like boxing. Try to exploit maybe a weakness using something that he's maybe not so familiar with. Now, Habib is a great grappler. I'm not saying that he doesn't know any jujitsu, but the right thing to do would have been to use more jujitsu in this situation. In this situation, okay? Watch this. So Habib shoots a shot. We come down to our knees, and he gets in on the leg, okay? So just move around, Joey, and get the best views. Okay. So as he's turning right here, and we end up in this situation, what Connor's trying to do, he wants to do what's called slip the shoulder. So he wants to move the shoulder this way, and this is what he did. And he was able to lock in the crotch, and his butt, his leg got put here, and then his other foot is here, and he's first like this, locking and trying to get the position. So in the last video, I talked about this defense, pulling up on the butt, the butt drag, combined with pressuring on the head, trying to force hip pressure to try to counter. This happened more when he was in the standing position. But there was a moment when Connor was here, trying to cut the angle, and he did a decent job. Come around to the front side, Joey, and look at the shoulder. You're fine, just going to turn the camera and move. Look at the shoulder. See the shoulder? The shoulder has been slipped. What Habib would like, he'd like the shoulder to stay in here. If the shoulder stays in here, I can't move around this corner. And then the easy move, if you can get this angle over here, just come up. Come up, Drake, look down here. The, the move is changing to a double leg. Once that happens, I'm down. If he's still on this leg, I try to lift my hip, you see? But the shoulder here, stops me from lifting my hip. So you have to slip the shoulder. So here's the shoulder getting slipped. He's trying to pressure the shoulder. I'm gonna make a move and I'm gonna slip it, okay? Like this. So now look right here. See the shoulder's been slipped. Now the angle and the lock on the crotch happens. Again, this kind of countering is outstanding stuff. It's really good stuff. But again, if you use this against a great wrestler and you're just a decent wrestler, which is what Connor is. A lot of you wrestlers out there are gonna go, he's not decent. Look, he's a decent wrestler. He has decent training. We're talking about Habib, okay? He fought it for a good, I don't, I didn't count how long it was, but a good 20 seconds or whatever. And then he got, he got beat in the position, but he actually did quite well for a little bit. So he was trained well, this and this. Now, I wanna talk about a move that Habib was doing, okay? So now that we established that, Okay, this, sit to your hip, there you go. Now, a move when he's locked in the crotch and he slipped the shoulder. This is a move that Habib flirted with. Okay, he didn't do it, but he started to do it. So there was a moment when he was here and Connor took a moment from his lock to hammer fist Habib. 
as he hammer fisted the back of his head, probably an illegal strike. I don't remember exactly where it hit, but anyway, he hammer fisted and then he went back to the lock in the crotch. Habib reaches back, if you guys watch the video, he reaches back and he hooks right here. Now, when he's doing that, why did he do that? Even though he let it go, he checked it. And then he came back. Now, what he was looking for, there's a few, couple different wrestling moves that you can do, and I wanna show those. So you understand inside the psychology of a wrestler. If the wrestler hooks this, what he's looking to do is trap this arm so that he can do a move to put you on your back. Now, I'll show you the more common thing, but one of the things you can do is I, I can hook and I can lift, and then I can throw him over my back. Just tuck your chin so you don't get hurt. And then I can throw the guy over my back, and then now once I'm here, I'm hooking his arm, and now no matter where we are in a wrestling match, I've got him on his back. As he tries to get up, his arm is controlled, so he can't, and if he goes the other way, his arm is controlled. So it's hard for him to get out. I could push off my feet and then double leg and come on top, okay? Now, that's not the most popular move. So make sure you're up close enough to see stuff. I'm not saying you gotta be too close, but, okay? Now, the more pop I'm gonna show you the more popular wrestling move, okay? The more popular one from this position. By the way, this is a lot of times called the crackdown position. So for the names, it's called the crackdown. My shoulder's been slipped a little bit. I don't want it to be. But when I'm here, I'm gonna post on my head, hook, and then as I post on my head, I'm gonna get on my toes and walk a circle, just like so. Sitting up, and in wrestling, we pin like this. As he kicks, he can't kick out. You know, he's like kicking his legs. He can't kick out, then I let him go. If I, if I lose it, I still have him on his back, just like the other situation when I threw him. And again, in wrestling, it's outstanding technique. He's on his back. He now has to bridge off his back. As he tries to bridge, he's stuck. And now I can come on top if I ever fear that I can't hold him any longer. Or sometimes I can even hook like this. Come on over here. Just walk around, Joey, over here. The front, buddy. See, now I'm controlling him like this. Sometimes maybe like this. It doesn't matter. I could pin like this in a wrestling match. Now, is this useful? Not really. There's, there is moves you can do but most of this is not very useful in a fight. It can work if the guy doesn't know what to do. But I'm telling you my opinion, guys, this is where wrestling meets MMA or wrestling meets jujitsu or MMA, all of it together. And you have to learn how to get rid of the bad wrestling and only keep the good wrestling. Wrestling's great, but you can't have all of wrestling and bring it into MMA. Turning your back so you're not pinned is bad. Okay, you're gonna get choked a lot of times. So every wrestler, when they first start doing jujitsu or MMA training, they learn, stop turning your back, you get choked. They learn, when you shoot a double leg, you now have to worry about getting choked with a guillotine, things like that. Well, this is another one. Let go of the crucifix position. Here it is. He goes for the leg, I'm locked in the crotch, I'm Conor McGregor, I slip the shoulder, and now I'm trying to fight from here. Guys, the position's so simple. Habib was out of position. Come around here. Look, my foot, my leg is already wrapped around his arm, okay? Whether it's here or whether it's inside. Inside. Here, it does not matter. I don't care. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna lock his arm. So come around to the front, okay? Making sure you get good angles, okay? If you have to tilt it down, you can tilt it down. You know how to tilt it. You know how to tilt it, Joe? So you can turn it, so you're not. There you go. I guess that's better, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we're here. Now, I'm gonna lift my hip up and go to this position, reaching around and feeding my left hand in for the crucifix. Use my hip, driving in towards him, he'll push back. As I do that, I'm gonna get my leg up to this position. Now, wrestling coaches out there will scream that this is horrible, because they don't understand. They think that doing this in a wrestling match is bad, it's because of the position, what we call the Peterson, where he will trap my arm and he will roll. And we end up here in a wrestling match. He's winning, he's pinning me. But guess what? In a fight, he's in a serious bad position. Who remembers UFC two? Was it two? Yes. With Gary Goodridge and Paul yeah. Herrera. Who remembers that? This, move, get the angles. 
Move, move, move. Get the angle, sir. Right here. This is a horrible position to be in. Locking down his arm and getting elbowed. Okay? The choke is here. Okay? The choke is here. All of this is bad. So remember, just because this is good in wrestling for that guy, doesn't mean it's good for him in a fight. In this position, I either have the wrist or I have the shoulder, and now he can't get out. If I keep the arm and I pinch my knees, he's not in a good position. That's the thing that wrestlers always end up learning, okay? The second they meet a good crucifix guy, they realize the high crotch position is one of the worst positions for, out of all the wrestling takedowns. It's probably the one of the worst. If you have this position, you wanna have an angle like this. So you can change to a double and you're fine. But the second that the high crotch position, come on over here, okay, you got it, is, is turns the angle to here and I'm here, I'm immediately gonna go like this, here. And go for the seatbelt and start digging the neck. Remember, this is illegal in wrestling. That's why it's not effective in wrestling. In wrestling, this is considered bad, bad idea. But in jiu-jitsu, it's one of the best things, or in MMA. You can choke right here as the guy's holding your leg. And now he can't defend his neck. He only has his left hand. So when he defends, you push it down and you start to choke. I roll over a little bit and I might get the choke right here, okay? That's what I think Connor should have done in that situation. It would have been way better. Now watch this. The second that anyone uses this wrestling move, can you reach back and hook my arm? The second he does that, Connor should have let go of his lock and immediately hooked just like a twister. So the same as a twister grip, now he doesn't get his arm back. Get your arm back. He can't like, like try to limp on. He can't. I now have his wrist. I'm gonna shallow up my elbow, put my elbow in his back, and I'm gonna start cranking him. As I pull him over, okay, now watch this finish. Right here, I still have his arm. I could go to the twister by pushing this down and switching to the leg, or if I just have the arm, I can pull this over my head, come around the front, Joe, and then I can get to the neck crank, here. All of this will work fine, or you can release the arm and go to the more traditional crucifix, right here, okay? So again, this is what, when someone reaches back, if you ever have a guy shoot, and you're here, guys, if he, come around here, if he reaches back, hook that arm immediately. Now look, I, I, all I gotta do is shallow up. Again, it doesn't, it's not a wrestling match, so I don't have to worry about going to my back and getting pinned. If I'm sitting on my butt, like this, th it's easy. You just pull him over. I don't care about where I am, because no matter how he moves, even if he tries to limp his arm out, you know the other one, even the one between the legs? I can't do this. Even if you got that out, like I'm still in good position, okay? Even if he tries to flip around, like even if I lost everything, he flips over here, like guys, I'm still in position because I have this arm. So in this position right here, I'll cross face and I'll put the hook, I'll get up, slide, and take the back. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I think that's what he should have done mostly. Uh, there's so much more I want to show you guys, but last thing I'll show you, again, there's so many moves that every, people are asking about what against the fence or like, what do, you, what, what do you do in these situations? It's not easy, guys. We're talking about the best lightweight in the world. You know, everybody's like, well, how, what would you do against Habib? Well, again, if I was Habib's size and if I was fighting for the title and if I had, was in good shape and I was a, a, a elite UFC level athlete and I was here. Um, by the way, what do you do against this hooking of the ankles? Okay, you know what? Uh, Connor actually did a good job. Guys, sure you got control, but how much damage happened in the first round? Nothing, really. I mean, not much at all. There was a few punches, a few, but nothing real that damaging. The first round was establishing the dominance and just saying, I'm gonna take you down, you're not gonna get away, and I'm gonna wear you out. That's what the first round was about. It wasn't about damage, it was just about asserting dominance, setting the tone for the rest of the fight. So once he's here, Connor did a good job. He wiggled, he got his knees and out, and he got his feet out. The problem is Habib kept dropping back down to the legs and then tied them together, and then again, he would wrap them up again. Remember, if you want to wrap these up, a little tip as well, is wrap them up, and you see if my feet are on the ground, he can't hook them, try to. 
It's very hard unless you're BJP. Just drop to your side, fall to your hip, and you can always get the angle. Do you see what he did? Look at this. Just fall to your hip, fall all the way down, fall down. It's not like I can get up. He has my legs. Now at this angle, he can lift my legs a little, and even with this knee. Like, you see? Now look at He can hook and, and get back up. With my legs tied up, I can't go on top, so it's not that risky to drop your hip. Okay, we do this in wrestling a lot. So anyway, we're here, and my legs are caught. He eventually like pushed and wiggled and got his legs out. Now what should he have done? Of course, Habib, he was trying to scoot against the fence. I th here's what I think, guys. Connor specifically trained not to turtle and go to his hands. In fact, that's what happened in the fourth round. He finally said, screw it, I've gotta get up. I can't play jujitsu from my back. And look what happened. He tried to wrestle a wrestler, and it didn't work. He turtled to his hands, and then he paid for it, he got pulled backward. Now, in this position, what would I do? Again, you gotta have the right wrestling skills. There's a lot of pressure forward. I know there's a lot of pressure. As I'm here, and he's trying to like, maul you and, and even though i think there was times where even habib like got up and he got up real real tall and he put his legs in from here you see he dropped his legs around as well if i'm not mistaken i think this happened but anyway once i'm here whether whatever kind of pressure is on me i need to get the right spots come around here look at what's going on okay look at his neck is here of course he's going to be hiding his neck i know that there's a lot of what ifs i have to get in front of his neck and get the space creator. Once I'm here, this left hand is monitoring. It's monitoring both arms that might hit me. If his right arm decides to throw punches, my right elbow is, is somewhat re, uh, reducing the, the punch. If his left hand wants to punch, my left hand right here is blocking that. I need, this needs to block stuff. If he throws with his right hand, comes across, I need to be able to reduce the, the amount of impact. If this is right here, he could throw right hand, a lot of impact. Now right here, I'm like blocking stuff and I'm paying attention, okay? So this is a frame. You gotta have the frame. So even if he's trying to keep me down, he's just trying to wrestle, I get the frame and I start to get back up. Putting my knee and keeping the blade. Of course he's gonna push me. Of course he's gonna look for this leg. He's gonna try and stop it. This is where you saw Connor use this kind of defense. It's good defense. He tried to tie up one arm so that he couldn't be finished when he was standing up. Now, if he captures my ankle, see down there? Look, look down there. Look, he's got my ankle. He's not gonna let me up. I can't stand up because he's got that ankle. I have to come back. I have to break this grip. If he holds that ankle, I can't do anything. I have to break this grip first. Now he's pushing me towards my back. Don't go back to here. This is where Habib's gonna take your back. This is where even if he stays under the arms, he wears his opponents out because he leans all of his weight on your upper body and he tires you out like a wrestling match. You can't do that. Here's a wrestling move, watch this. It's called a knee slide. The knee slide. Sorry about that. Sorry, Coach. And now when he tries to push weight onto my hands, my hands are light. He's pushing me against the fence. He, uh, it's not, push me onto my hands. See, I'm knee sliding, I'm pushing my way back up. I'm fighting with my elbows, I'm breaking the grips and I'm coming back up. Just because I show you this, guys, these are ideas, but it's not easy to do against the best in the world. We're talking about the best in the world. But if you wanted some tips, some ideas, this is it. I'm caught. The guy has my legs. He's triangled my legs. Get some space. Get some space, widen my knees. Now he wants to keep me down. He just wants to square up and hold my legs and keep me down. The frame comes next. Posting, trying to get my leg out. If he won't let my leg out, Take it out, you've got to eventually get it free. You get up on one knee, now here he comes. And remember, if the punches come, you got to be ready to block. But he's probably going to stay in on your legs. He might try to pull me out. He might stand up and pull me out. You know, I've got to stay up here and keep fighting. You know, I've got to keep fighting here. I've got to understand defense. Single leg defense, you know. Um, use what Connor used. Get inside here, get this frame. Come up into the position. If it goes from my legs or my body or a double leg, right here, right here, lifting this up. As he's pressuring me, I have to make movements. Lift this arm. Move along the fence. Trying to move, look for arm drags on your way out. If you, even if you can't, if you're like pressured, get to a position where you can go double unders. That way you can turn him off the fence, okay? 
Okay, so I hope it's all working. Joey, you having fun with the camera? A little bit too much. Did you get uh, Did you get some good angles? I think so. Okay, I hope so, because you know you're going to hear it in the comments section. Yeah. Everybody, I'm really sorry that we're having some problems with the camera, and I'm not saying today was bad. Hopefully it was really good. Let me know in the comments section if Joey did a good job. Um, it's just, it's rough on these guys because they need photography training, and they're just jujitsu MMA people. So... They don't have those skills yet, but we're working. We work a lot on our MMA and our jiu-jitsu and our wrestling. We don't always work on our photography skills, so we're just we're beginners. We're white belts with one stripe. So um, I'll get you that stripe later, Joey. So thank you guys so much. There's a little bit of information. Thank you, Coach Timmy. Okay. Um, please, guys, click the link down below, Patreon, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's blowing up. We're now over 40,000. Um, this past weekend was awesome. We're getting everybody interested and. Uh, I'm real happy with what's going on with the channel. Um, what else can be said? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for more stuff. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I got tons of ideas from Butterfly Guard, but let me know what's uh, bugging you right now out in your, uh, in your neck of the woods. Thank you guys so much.